to the Republican Party of Lake County headquarters. For those of you who have not been here, it is humble, but it is one of only seven Republican Party headquarters in the entire state of Florida. So we're kind of proud of that. Uh, this morning, uh, although not on the schedule, Tom Vale is with us, and he asked if he could just uh, jump to the front and say a, a quick hello. So with that, Tom. And the, the only reason I'm doing this is because there was some advertising that was incorrect. Uh, we had a coffee with candidates two weeks ago that was supposed to be the two of us, and it he hadn't confirmed. And I've talked to everybody that was involved, so that was just a simple mistake, nothing suspicious there. But since I had that full hour to myself, I think Alan Hayes deserves the same treatment. So I just came to say hello and goodbye because some people were expecting me to be here today. So thanks right. for showing That's it. Awesome. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Tom. Okay. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye, everyone. Thank you. Okay. Today's format. I am a lifelong Republican from a Democrat family in a Democrat town, going to Democrat schools in a Democrat city in a Democrat state. And what attracted me to the Republican Party when I was a young man, that was a long time ago, was that Republican speech, Republican speech, had power in the sincerity of their words, not in the volume of their voice. So this is a uh, the Supervisor of Elections is our guest today. Election integrity and elections in general are a very touchy subject these days. There's a lot of contention, but we're going to try to keep this civil, and we're going to try to keep this sincere, and we're going to try to keep this nice and calm. All right, so if you have questions, please write down your questions, give them to me. I will ask the questions of the Senator. I'll tell you right now, that Loretta, when she called me and asked me to moderate, expressed maybe a little bit of concern that things will get out of hand. They will not get out of hand. And if they do, if someone should get out of hand, they might be asked to leave. I don't want to do that, okay? Full disclosure, I am a poll worker, so this year, three times this year, I'll be working for this man. Just as full disclosure, all right? But Loretta felt that I did a good job last week moderating, so I'm moderating this week. All right? Any questions about the format? What is your name? I'm My sorry. name is Mike Trainer. Mike Trainer. <laughs> I'm sorry. You said that I'm gonna write it down. Now I take notes. Like, yep. and he was a Mike paramedic Trainer. from 9/11 in New York. Oh, awesome. Wow. Okay, so thank you. That's why I'm in Florida. 9/11 <laughs> <laughs> hurt me bad. <laughs> anyway, uh, with that, I'd like to introduce our guest this morning. Alan Hayes is not only our supervisor of elections, but he is a former state representative. He's a former state senator. He is a deacon of the First Baptist Church in Umatilla. He is the father of three, the grandfather of seven, and the great-grandfather of one. Mm. All right, so wow. with that, awesome. Alan's going to uh, talk to us for maybe 10 or 15 minutes, and then we'll go into a Q&A by written question only. Thank you. Alan? Great. Thank you, Mike, and thank you all for being here. Uh, you know who I am, but I don't know you. So we're going to do it. <clears throat> Excuse me, a little unconventional. I want to start back there in the back corner. If you will, please, everybody tell me your name. Victoria Hall. Okay. Uh, I'm Leslie. I've been a member of the Republican Party in Lake County for 10 years. Okay. And before that, I've been a Republican too. Good. Sue Parent. Colleen Cheetah. Sheree McCancy. Jeffries. Jean Hayes. I know Brenda you. Brenda Smith, and my son's running for county commissioner this year. Oh. Kirby Smith. Kirby. Oh, yes, I love that. I love Kirby. Vance Yoakum, I don't have any relatives running. <laughs> <laughs> Me, Michael Amaral. Marie Dubois. <coughs> Marty White. <coughs> Good. And I. 
Marty White. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it got good. blended into another noise. Okay. <laughs> and then who do we have here? You're just in time to introduce yourself. I'm, well, I'm John looking back. Yeah. Okay. Welcome, John. Come on Here's in. We have all the and donuts and a seat for so you. you want to stand up? Okay. Yes. Well, folks, I, uh, I do appreciate very much your being here. I thank you for the privilege of being your supervisor of elections. And to try to keep me on track, I'm going to use some notes. But for the last seven years, I've been privileged to serve as your supervisor of elections. We have an outstanding track record of success in every election. I'm going to run on that track record, and I'm going to tell you the truth. That's what it's all about. John 8.32, and the Bible tells us you shall know the truth, and the truth will set you free. I am a free man. I want to remain a free man. And I refuse to be captive to anybody's lies. Nor, and I also refuse to try to in, captivate or capture anybody else in a lie. I'm going to tell the truth. That's all there is to it. When I took over, I sat down with my team and we agreed to make four points of commitment to the voters of Lake County. First and foremost, intentionally first and foremost, is voter confidence. We know without that voter confidence, Everything else we do is for naught. So our first commitment is voter confidence. Our second commitment is excellent customer oh. service. We want everybody to be treated with respect. We want to be as proficient as we can, whether it be communication through the phone, in person, <coughs> or through email, or however it might be. Our third point is accurate and efficient elections. Our fourth point is responsible financial stewardship. It's your tax dollars that you have trusted us to utilize and maximize the utilization of. We have returned to the Board of County Commissioners over $3 million cumulative over that seven year period that we did not use. We, we plan for the worst when we're making our budget and then we pray for the best and that enables us. Plus we've got a lot of grant money and that sort of thing. So anytime that we can save the taxpayers of Lake County money, we're going to try to save as much as we can. We have modernized the office. One of the first things I did was institute the use of electronic poll books. The, the poll register at the, each precinct, the technology that was used in the 2016 election here in Lake County, was the same technology they used for the precinct registers in the 1816 presidential election. It was nothing more than a stack of paper in a booklet form. You thumb down through it till you found the voter's name. They signed beside their name, and then they were given a ballot to vote. Well, in 2017, when we had the city elections, we then had electronic poll votes. Everybody shows their photo ID card, and then you go ahead and put them in. We initiated a ballot on demand process for our early voting sites. The 2016 election, we analyzed the utilization of the pre-printed ballots, which had been used in all elections prior to that. And 34% of the pre-printed ballots went in the trash can because they hadn't been used. And, and that's, that's not really a reflection on poor planning because nobody knows until after the election what the turnout's going to be. And the last thing you want to do as an administrator is run out of ballots. But still, 34% was tremendously wasteful, I felt like. So we found a better way. Now we have no waste in our early voting. Um, 30, uh, all of the all the ballots are printed right there at the site for each individual, depending on what precinct they're from. So that's a very good thing. Our handicapped voting machines had to be updated before the 2020 election by state statute. So we we invested money in what we call the Express Vote, which is not a tabulation machine. It's a ballot printing device for handicapped people. Blind people can use it. It has a Braille pad. They can vote independently. They don't have to have someone else assisting them. We put headphones on them. We read the ballot choices to them. They use the braille pad to make their choices. Then they can review their choices. They can edit the choices if they'd like to. Then when they accept the choices, the machine print gives them their card back to them with their choices put on it. And then it's taken over and put into the tabulation machine. The, um, that machine is so sophisticated if they have no use of their hands, they can use a sip and puff straw uh, so they can still cast their ballot in the We've streamlined all of our procedures. We, 
we look at everything that we do with a critical eye and say, how can we make it better for the voters on election day? And our ballot on demand process is one of those ways. Our vote by mail process has been revised completely and, and overhauled and is much, much better now. Um, we, we have instituted regular team meetings. One of the long-term retired employees came to see me after I'd been in office probably, I don't know, three months. And I didn't even know she was in the building. She walked around and visited with all the people that she had wanted to visit with. And she came and sat down in my office and she says, I'm mad. And I said, why? She says, I've been talking to the people that I worked with and says, they're all enjoying it here. She says, and you have staff meetings. I worked here for 35 years and you never had one. And I said, well, I believe in open communication. It's better for everybody to know what each person on the team is doing so you know what role you're playing and, and the contribution that you're making to the overall success of the team. Um, we added an early voting site. We now have 12 early voting sites. We have social media presence on Facebook and Twitter and these, are, I don't even know all the different social media. I, don't, I, I intentionally stay off of that stuff. But um, we have that presence. I have a, a full-time person in community outreach, does a great job. We want the community to know about voting before the candidates get out there and start talking about, oh, here's me, you need to vote for me. We, we want the people to understand that our system of voting is the bedrock of our republic. And we want them to have confidence in it. We are happy for it to be a year-round discussion. We don't like it to be so contentious and so many lies being told about it, but that's okay. You have to put up with that stuff. We are 100% in compliance with every state law and every state rule that affects elections in Florida. We have always been compliant with it, and we will continue to be compliant with it. Every single one is compliant. There's been a lot of, a lot of controversy about our list maintenance. That's a big, complicated process, if you will. Far too complicated to get into the details now. But I'll simply tell you, we are totally and completely in compliance with every aspect of it. We've done a lot of improvements on our website, <clears throat> completely overhauled the website. I continue to get compliments on how easy it is to use, how much it's improved, and that sort of thing. Um, we have improved our inter-office communication with our regular staff meetings, and we have, we have divided the office into five different categories of <coughs> departments, if you will. We have a director in each of those departments, and we always we have a monthly director meetings. We've updated our policy manual. We have, we have encouraged all of our full-time staff to enter a program for professional development. The Florida Association of Supervisors has collaborated with Florida State University and put together a 30-course curriculum of professional development. It leads to a designation, Master Certified Florida Elections Professional, MFCEP. I thought, okay, if you're going to ask your people to do it, you better do it yourself. So I have earned that certification, and we now have 13 or 14 people in the office that have earned it, completed the courses, and we have others that are working toward that um, diploma, and it's a, a very good program and helps tremendously. We, uh, we, the state law requires every election must be audited. You can do a, it requires you to do a, a hand audit or an automated independent audit system. Well, up until 20, 2020, actually 2023 is the first time we used uh, officially the independent audit system. The hand audit is random selection of one contest and then random selection of the precincts in which that contest occurs. You have to get one or two precincts in which that contest occurred. So you choose that random contest, then you look and say, okay, which precincts did it occur? You choose random precinct out of that number. Then you go through all your ballots, your vote by mail ballots, your election day ballots, and your early voting ballots, and you retrieve all the ballots for that precinct, and then you go through them and you hand count every single time we came out 100% match, identical, on the, um, the tabulation system. Now then, I'm, I'm, I'll get to questions later. As a matter of fact, write your question down and give it to Mike. I'll be happy to take it. So now what we do instead is we are utilizing an automatic, automated independent audit system. It's called Clear Ballot. It's the company that manufactures it. And 
we first used it in um, 2022, and then we used it again in 2023. First, let me explain a little bit about it. We have our, well, everything we do, everything we do is regulated by state statutes or the rules of the Division of Elections. In, in essence, our hands are somewhat tied, but we do have some flexibility to customize some things. And so, the, the, um, where was Okay, talking, oh yes. All right. We have the tabulation system. We're only authorized to use tabulation systems that have been approved by the Division of Elections Bureau of Standards. There are only two companies that have earned that certification. One is Dominion, which we do not use, never have used, never will use. The other is ES&S, which we've used very effectively and they're an excellent company. So ES&S has the scanners over here that scan all the ballots, look at all the colored ovals and all of their array of, of density and lack thereof. John, you'll sit down up here. And so then, then we have, that's, that's the ES&S official tabulation system. Then we have the automated independent system, clear ballot, that has been certified by the Bureau of Standards as an audit mechanism. But you have two completely independent systems. You have two different scanners that are manufactured by different people. So you don't expect those scanners to read all the marks identically. So we, we ran the 2022 um, election, the entire election. We had one race that had a deviation of nine votes. All the other races in the entire county were either identical matches or they deviated by eight or fewer votes, which tells you the ESNS system was highly, highly accurate. Fast forward to 2023, we had five city elections and we compared all of them, all of the races, we had one race that deviated by one vote. So we looked into it. Why did that happen? Because one technician failed to follow the instructions. And they put a ballot through that should not have been put through. It had already gone through one time. So we had, but, but all the rest of it, that shows you how accurate our ESNS system is and how, how reliable it is. Um, we have done a tremendous amount of in, uh, increased action in the community. We have all sorts of speaking engagements. We have, sir, you'd like to sit down up here? Here's a seat up here if you right like. Here. There's a couple up here. Yeah. I promise not to bite anybody. <laughs> if, I, if I come out too close, I may spit on you, but that'll be unintentional. <laughs> okay. Um, we got different events that we attend to, again, trying to make sure that people have an opportunity to update their signatures if they need to. They can change their address if they need to. Be out there in the community interacting with the people of Lake County. We have different speaking engagements. I go to civic clubs. We have others that can go to, to civic clubs and things like that. Republican clubs, Democrat clubs. We don't care. We'll go anywhere in Lake County to talk to the people about what we do and how we do it. We've got larger office space. We are currently in, involved in another process to get even more office space. We're grossly overcrowded. Um, we have done tremendous strides to increase both our office security and our cyber security. Uh, we spent well over $100,000 just on the cyber security alone. We have improved our vote by mail process and one of the big parts of that is a program called Ballot Tracks. And every, every person who signs up, first let me talk about vote by mail period. We, by law, do not send a vote by mail ballot to anybody who doesn't have a request for that vote by mail in their record. That's it, period. That's Some states, there are about five or six, that mail ballots to everybody. Their system is set up intentionally to do that. But our system says, no, you only mail to people who have a request. And so that's what we do there. Each of those people are given an opportunity to enroll in a program called Ballot Tracks. That gives them an opportunity to choose to be notified by text or by phone call or by email and they can do all three or they can do any of the three, when the ballot is mailed to them, when we receive their return ballot, and if there's any issues with their signature, they're notified immediately, and then also when the ballot is tabulated, they're notified. So it's a complete track of 
that vote by mail ballot, the voter knows themselves. Um, we have instituted election worker training both in South Lake County and in North Lake County. Previously, all the training was done in Mount Dora. People had to drive from Claremont up to here, so we said, hey, we can send three or four people to Claremont instead of having everybody drive up here. We've had great cooperation with the city of Claremont. They give us a room in the Arts and Rec Center down there, and the, the workers down there really appreciate not, not having to drive up here. Um, same thing with North Lake. We're currently this week we're training, and next week we'll be training at the Magnolia Room at Lake Sumter State College. So we've got very good cooperation from our partners around the county. Um, another thing we've done for the workers is uh, online training. We've got some online, uh, not, not all of it, just part of their training is online. Statutes require us to train each worker for each election. You can't train them in January or February and say, okay, now you're good for the year. you got to go to the whole, uh, each, each individual election has to be. We instituted a wall of honor. We asked any veteran or any family of any veteran who wanted to submit their name and hopefully a picture to to give it to us, give us their name, rank, serial, not your serial number, <laughs> their name and their rank of the unit they served with, when they served, that sort of thing, any special medals or things like that. And we put it on a big 55-inch TV screen there in our office. And it runs on a continuous loop. It's accessible on the website. We encourage people to realize we would not be voting today if it were not for the sacrifices that those people and their families have made. So we like to honor them that way. We've had office tours available for five years. We don't care if it's a group of one or a group of 41. We ask people to sign up on the website Tuesdays and Thursdays. They can come in. Now, when we're super busy with elections, we don't have that availability, but through the rest of the year we do. We're proud of what we do. We do it very, very well, and we like to educate people and let them see what your tax dollars are, are buying, you know. We've done a lot of other improvements we've got. The precinct supplies previously were sent out without a whole lot of, uh, shall we say, collectivism. <laughs> now we have one big cart. We stole the idea from Marion County. I'm not, not ashamed to steal good ideas. I'd rather borrow genius than to invent mediocrity. Yeah. And uh, so we got the, the idea for the carts. And it, it helps our workers be able to find stuff. We've got an inventory sheet. We actually tell them where, on what shelf the, the materials are located, that sort of thing. Our overall goal is to try to enhance the election day experience for everybody. So that's where we are. With that, I'm ready. Very good. Thank, Thank you very much. Okay, first thing, uh, if you have a question about training, I'm a poll worker. There's another poll worker here. Feel free to ask either of us questions about the training we went through, okay? Just so we take a little bit of the pressure off of the supervisor. So I've arranged these questions in order of specificity. We'll start with the most general and then we'll work towards specifics, if that's okay with everybody. All right? The first one, how many years have you been in public service in Lake County? And you ha have you ever been involved in a bankruptcy? No. <laughs> I've, never, I've never been involved in a bankruptcy. I have been involved in public service of Lake County. Depends on how you define it. If you want to define it very broadly, my dental practice was a, a public service. Um, I've tw for 27 years, I owned my own family practice of dentistry in Umatilla. In 2003, we sold that practice, planning to go into semi-retirement, thinking, now I can do dentistry two days a week, I can play golf two days a week, and I can goof off for the three days a week. <laughs> and instead, some friends asked us to run for the House of Representatives in 2004. We prayed about it, we talked about it, we sought counsel from other people, said, okay, we'll run. We won. I served six years in the House of Representatives, then I moved over to the Senate for six years, and then in 2016, I ran for it and was successful in winning this position. So I guess you could say 19 years I've been in official public service, if you elected office um, for 19 years. But no, I've never, I've never even come close to being in a bankruptcy. Great. Thank you, sir. All right, this <coughs> next is uh, two questions I believe submitted by the same person, judging by the handwriting. I'm going to combine them. 
What will you do to restore public trust in our election process and ensure transparency <clears throat> in that process? Good question. I will continue to tell the truth. John 8.32 says, you shall know the truth, the truth will set you free. I, I stand on that, folks. It's not an oversimplification, nor is it an exaggeration. That scripture verse in itself is very, very true. And I am a truthful man. You will not catch me in a lie. You may not like what I tell you, and you may not like the way I say it. Unfortunately, some people have the verbal skills. They can tell you to go to hell in a way that makes you look forward to the trip. <laughs> yep. And I'm the kind of guy that can tell you to have a nice day and you might be offended just by my tone of voice. And, and I apologize for that. But that's just who Alan is. I'm trying to work on it. I will make improvements from time to time. Even my wife tells me I'm getting better sometimes. But then she also says, hey, you need to you know, get back on your game plan. But you will never, ever catch me in a lie. I am going to tell the truth. <laughs> the truth is how you, you know and how you, sh you earn the credibility for your system of elections. What was the second part of that question? And the second part was how are you going to ensure transparency? Oh, transparency. I don't know how we could be more transparent. We've got office tours. I, transparency is big to me. As I said before, we're very proud of what we do and how we do it. When I designed the internal walls of the building that we currently occupy, I intentionally put four-foot square windows in the walls of the vote-by-mail department, in the walls of the tabulation room, and the canvassing board. People can sit there, they can stand there, any position of posture they want to adopt, and they can watch what goes on. We have office tours. How else can I be more transparent? That's the question. So I will continue to have those office tours available, except during high, high work times. I will continue to keep the wall. And when we build our new building down here on Lane Park Road and State Road 19, we'll have glass in the walls there. We also have TV camera, TV, security cameras. We got over 20 security cameras on the property that we have there now. So if anybody suspects any scurrilous activity going on, in any room, you tell us what day and what time and what room, we can go back and pull up the video and, and watch it and see if your suspicions are true. So, you know, I don't know how we can be more transparent than we already are, but we'll continue to be that way. Thank you, sir. All right, this next one is about citizenship. Is it true that citizenship confirmation is based on an honor system? In, no. the, in other words, the person registers to vote just checks the box stating whether they are a citizen of the U.S. Is there any other way to make certain that it is a citizen voting in Lake County, and how is this vetted? The, the person filling out the application checks the box that says, I affirm that I am a citizen of the United <coughs> States. Yes or no? Well, obviously, if it's a no, they're not going to be there, so they check yes. We, we do not register anybody first step. We take the applications or they do it at the DMV or you can do it online. That information is then sent to the Division of Elections in Tallahassee where they have the equipment, they have the database access and all the other records that they do the cross matching to ascertain the citizenship yes or no. If they ascertain yes, they send it back to us and let us know everything is okay. If they said a no, then it's no, and they don't get registered. So all of the citizenship verification work is done in Tallahassee with cross-matching between the DMV and FDLE, whoever, whoever they cross-match with. I don't know all the details of that. But none of the supervisors have any responsibility. We don't have the tools to do that with. Thank you, sir. All right, this next one is about voter rolls updating voter okay. rolls specifically, and it just says discuss, so perhaps you could give us a brief rundown of the process of updating voter rolls. Okay. State law does not require people to notify us every time they move. How many of y'all are living in the same house today that you did lived in 10 years ago? And myself included, but still not everybody. Wow. The, the, the turnover in our population is far, far greater than I ever expected. 
But nevertheless, people move. They don't notify us. They certainly notify the electric company because they want their lights turned on. But they don't think about notifying us until they show up to vote at their previous location. And then it dawns on, oh my goodness, I should have changed my address. Well, fortunately, we have have ways of doing these things. But nevertheless, the, the law said previously, every other year we go through the list maintenance process. Federal law says you cannot remove anybody from the voter rolls uh, within 90 days of a federal election. So that limits us as to when we can do the list maintenance. And so you have to start at certain times and get off of it and that sort of thing and then re resume it again, that sort of thing. The, the definition of an address is highly, highly controversial. The, the courts even have had cases where they have said, essentially, the address is what the voter puts down there. They can claim this building as their address if they want to. <clears throat> Folks, we can only do what the legislature and the courts tell us to do. So that's what we've done. But we update previously every two years. Now the legislature a year ago said you got to update every year and it has to be started by April 1st. They didn't realize some of the restraints that they were building into that. But nevertheless, we're going to do it because that's what the law says to do. Just like we have always done exactly what the law said to do. So that's probably the best I can do in this particular setting. But it is a highly complex situation. If you if you find somebody, <clears throat> such we did, we went through here, um, found a whole bunch of people, I guess I think about 24, 25,000 people who had not voted in the last two years, had no activity in their voter record. Of, so we moved them from active to inactive. And now the only thing it takes to get them back to active status is some sort of interaction, either a phone call or they show up to vote or whatever. It's not removing from the voter rolls. Now, if they, if they continue to have no action in their voter file for the next two years, then we move them, remove them completely. And then if they want to register again, they have to go through the whole registration process. So it's a, it's a very fluid process. Okay, a follow-up to that from another questioner. What about UPS stores? It says on the voter registration form that you cannot use a P.O. box as your residential address. Does anyone in your office check these? Not that I'm aware of. I'd have to. I'd have to check and see. Okay. Are voters allowed to have residential addresses at commercial addresses? Yes. Okay. How do you verify whether a voter lives where they say they live? We don't. And do you know <coughs> that by state statute? Well, again, it's it, the. As I said before, the courts have basically said we take the address to be that which the voter puts on the on the paper. Okay. All right. Now this is a second uh, part of that uh, uh, updating voter rolls question. Does each person requesting a mail-in ballot are they verified as being a legal voter? Well, of course. <laughs> and could you well, explain that they, process? Yeah. You. When you, when you request a vote by mail ballot, you have to give us either the last four digits of your social security number or your driver's license number and your date of birth and your address, which we compare all of that information with that which is in your voter record. And if it doesn't match, then we got a problem. Okay. All right, this next one is on ballot harvesting. Can we do it? If so, how? How do we get our reluctant voters to early vote? That's a, a mixed question there, Mike. Um, ballot harvesting by statute is illegal. So, no, you can't legally do it. Can you do it? Yeah, you can do it. But, you know, folks, this is, this is a situation that needs clarification. And the legislature needs some consistency as well. Because if somebody is bent on going through neighborhoods <coughs> and collecting ballots, there's nothing to stop them from doing that and taking those ballots to your local post office or one of the local uh, postal drop boxes and putting two, 20, or 200 of them 
in there at any given time. In front of my office, we used to have a ballot drop box. We didn't have a security camera on it. We had three security cameras on it, one of which picked up the license tag of the vehicle as they went through the, the line. It was convenient. They could drive up there and literally push the ballot into the box. I intentionally had the intake of that box designed so it was only about that high and, of course, the full width. But you couldn't put four or five ballots in there at a time. If you wanted to, if you, if you had 30 of them in your car that you wanted to push in there against the law, and we would be, we'd be sitting there, could watch you on camera do it, you know. So the legislature said, no, the whole, I, I can get straight to the point. Until the legislature finds a way to control the input at the post office, ballot stuffing, you can get away with it if, you, if you're intended to do it. You're breaking the law. We're, we're partisans here. Yeah. Shouldn't we be doing that if the if our the opposing party is doing it? If it's no, sir, it, no. it, just it, because it's somebody being is yeah. practice, yeah. then yeah. we need to, to participate. Well, I, I disagree. Just because somebody else breaks the law doesn't give you well, a license well, to well, do so. Well, then, then are they being prosecuted, and are those votes votes being voided? Okay, that that this is my concern. Yeah. In other words, we, we got to play by the same rules I would as agree they with do. Because yeah. we, you know, we've got a lot of votes here in Lake County. Yeah. It's going to offset a whole bunch of votes. You and I both are getting in trouble. If you have a follow-up to write it down and okay. present right. it to me. Right. 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 I'm just right. saying. But we, we, the we, rules we, of the <laughs> format of this okay. is real okay. question. All right. Next question. Present it to me. Go ahead. The next question. Did, wait, did I answer that question fully about the ballot harvesting? I think. Okay. I, I, I think what you said was you tried to do something about it and you were told you couldn't. Yeah. The security, let me, let me elaborate a little more too. The security that we had on our ballot drop box was far, far greater than what we have now. Because with that drop box, as I said, the three cameras were trained on it 24-7. Every morning, two people, not one, but two people from my office went outside, retrieved the ballots out of that box, came inside, counted them, recorded on a, a custody sheet their names, the date, the time, and how many ballots they retrieved out of the box, and then they logged them in to the vote-by-mail department. Every afternoon, they did the same thing. Twice a day, we harvested the... That's probably a poor choice. <laughs> we, we retrieved the ballots from the box. <laughs> and, and, and so, but... And it was all done under camera surveillance. <clears throat> Today, there is a blue... That, that box was white, nevertheless, and had office insignia on it with a message that said this and that and the other. Anyhow, today there's a blue postal service box out there. The three cameras are still on it, but people can drive up there, put it in. Then, once a day, a postal employee comes by by themselves. I've never seen two together. One postal employee picks up what's in there. It can be other mail, too, because any mail goes now. They take it to the Tiberius Post Office. It then goes to the Lake Mary Processing Center, may or may not stay there overnight or a day or two, who knows. Then it comes back to the Tavares Post Office. Then it comes back to us. Now, which is the more secure process, wow. folks? Yeah. Thank you, legislature. That's what they did. The Citrus County Supervisor's Office is currently housed in a bank that used to, uh, in a building that used to be a bank. And they've got the <laughs> drop box there. They can't use it unless they have somebody, an employee of the supervisor's office has to be there monitoring that uh, slot in person. So they just locked it up and it can't be used. Go ahead. Okay, the next one. How do you use ballot track for people in assisted living who are old and can't see or use? Can you a question? That's a good question. And probably the answer is they can't. But here's, let's talk about the supervised voting, okay? The law says that if any <coughs> assisted living facility, nursing home, whatever, congregate living facility, has five or more voters that want to have their ballots delivered to them, we have to send a team to that facility through coordination with their activities director and all that sort of thing. And essentially it mounts to hand-delivered vote-by-mail is the simple way to explain the process. We, we get their, their names, we know what precinct they're in, so we print a ballot for that particular precinct, and then we take it out there. We make sure the team going out there 
everything is recorded. We got a spreadsheet probably that wide with all the information on it. But we make sure we have no two people from the same party. You have either a Republican or a Democrat or an NPA or whatever. But we make sure that we don't send two Republicans <clears throat> and two Democrats out there. They then get all the voters there together and we guide them through the process of voting. They have to sign the uh, ballot envelope just like anybody else does and then we bring it back. Okay, this next one says, with regard to the voter rolls, have you found any truth in the information brought to you by constituents? In other words, I'm sure that, that you've had people ask you specific things about yeah. voter rolls. Has that information that they've brought to you been of benefit to you? Not that I'm aware of. Let me, uh, let me explain that we, we, probably all of you have heard about my, uh, my edict to the group city to put up or shut up. I was at a point where I was tired of all of the, the innuendo and all the false accusations that had been leveled toward our office. And I said, okay, it's time for you people to either put up or shut up. So they brought us a stack of alleged transgressions that was about that thick. We went through every one of those. We found one that was valid. That one had voted by mail legally here in Lake County. Everything was done by the book. That person then went to Duval County where they appeared to vote in person without an identification card. Appropriately, the Duval County election workers at the polling site gave that person a provisional ballot they took the provisional ballot back to their headquarters where the canvassing board decided to allow them to accept that ballot. If they had done their homework, they would have discovered that person had already voted in Lake County before they went to Duval County and they should not have allowed it. But that monkey is not on our back, that monkey is on the Duval County back. But that's the only one that I'm aware of that we found. Yes, sir. Wait a minute. No, no, I'm breaking the rules already. You gotta, you gotta go through. Yeah. Write, oh, write oh, your oh, question oh, down. Oh, okay. Okay. I would like you to please verify who brought the attention of that double voter to your office. I don't know. Oh, it was you. Okay. Then. And you sat in your office. Well, this is. I'm not trying to make things contentious. We sat in your office and we literally, with you, called Duval County because you did not trust what we were bringing to you. Okay. So thereby, we the constituents brought you that information that you would not have looked at had we not... Why, why would it. I not have looked at that? Because, because I had sent the voter, it to you five months prior and because you Because the voter voted, voted legally here in Lake County. Right. Yeah. But double voter, because she voted twice in the state. Yeah. All right, this uh, goes back to, uh, this was just submitted and it goes back to talking about uh, the voter rolls. Is there any coordination with the post office for changes of address? Yes. We, we, use, we use, to some degree, the uh, National Change of Address, NCOA is called. And there's, there's multiple sources that we can use on the address verification, things like that. Unfortunately, uh, the NCOA list is proven not to be totally accurate either. It's, it's like trying to nail jello to the wall. It's about what it is, is like because we have such a highly mobile society and people just move all the time. Yeah. The important thing is, and this is, one of the, this is one of the huge advantages that the electronic poll book gives us. Once that ballot is issued, the system is notified throughout the entire county. So the chances of you voting the second time are zero. If you, if you, once that, re, you know, we talk about the, the vote by mail ballots that are not used. People will bring them sometimes and turn them in at the polling place, which is the proper procedure. But other times they don't bring them. But if that record shows that they have not voted with that return vote by mail ballot already, then they're allowed to vote in person. And then, if, if the vote by mail ballot is tried to put through the system, the system blocks it and rejects it because they've already voted in person.
So that's a huge advantage the electronic Can vocal gives us. Can that's too long to write down? Okay, next question. Next question. Okay. AT&T's network went down for many of its customers last week. Mm -hmm. I'm sure everybody's aware of that. Yeah. Leaving them unable to access the internet. Does Lake County have any emergency election protocols in place in the event we lose power or when the internet goes down? We've got all kinds of emergency protocols in place and planning and that sort of thing. Um, if the internet goes down, just like the rest of the world, we're sort of hamstrung. Yeah. Um, if it just flat out goes down. But let's, let's clarify when and how and where we use the internet. We use the internet like you do for email. We also use the inter uh, internet for our voter registration database. Let's hasten to add, though, the state of Florida is the owner and the administrator of that database. They have multiple layers of security in there. We go through basically what amounts to an internet service provider. Some people will use Yahoo, others use Microsoft, others use the Gmail and, and that sort of thing. Well, every county in the state of Florida uses a company called VR Systems that was originated in Tallahassee, it's still headquartered in Tallahassee, it's an co employee-owned company, but, and they, they deal with, like I said, all 67 counties in Florida, and they have several other states that they're involved in, too. So they have multiple layers of security. Lake County has multiple layers of security, and our office has multiple layers. So there's just tons of security on this stuff to keep hackers out. That doesn't keep the Internet from going down. If it can go down, it, you know, there's not a thing in the world we can do. And so, yeah, we'd be sort of hamstrung there. We do have a backup. If, if the electronic poll book doesn't work, every precinct has the, the, uh, the little gray bag that says opening case of emergency only. And that's the printed precinct register of everybody in that precinct. And then we can go through. We can still vote without the Internet. This next question, I don't think you're going to be able to answer, but I'm going to ask it just out of a sure. sense of integrity. Okay. Can you explain why in South Carolina primary they had to quit processing because the internet was down? I have no, I, no, no idea, no, no knowledge of that <clears throat> whatsoever. But if the internet goes down in Florida, can we continue to process? Absolutely. It's really not a problem for us. Because we don't use the internet in our tabulation system at all. Is that by hand? Pardon me? If it went down, then you have a system that you can do it by hand. We don't Is need to do it by hand. About? We'll continue doing our tabulation just like we always do. Okay. Because our tabulation system has no connection, zero connection at any time with the, the internet. That's just so the internet doesn't have to be there at all for us to continue tabulation. All right, now we're going to start getting into the hardcore stuff. If you notice, there hasn't been a question from Vance yet. So. <laughs> Everybody knows Vance. I have a question right. too, Mike. Okay, well, write it down, Loretta. Write it down. Well, I did, but Frank I didn't want to. does not have any privileges here. <laughs> well, if you can read it now, I've been writing all over it. So, so let's get on with this one. This is a three-part question. A, are you the author of the Florida Supervisor of Elections 2024 Legislative Priorities document. That's not my question. No, I know. <laughs> okay. I am the Legislative Committee Chairperson of the Florida Association of Supervisors. I am the one who actually wrote what my colleagues decided on were the priorities. I put it on paper. And then our executive secretary put it in the format with which it was published. So in that context, yes, I wrote it. But it wasn't, it wasn't all my brainchild. It was a, the collective wisdom of all 67 supervisors. Okay, the second part of that question is, the first priority on the document is protection of election workers from harassment and threats. Why the need for protection? Why not? If you're asking a question, I'd like to answer that. Are, are you the one who wrote that question? No, sir, I'm not. Who, who wrote this question? 
But I would have been proud to have wrote it. Well, I, I wait, well, no, no, hang on. We, we, you and I can talk, but I want to know who wrote this question. What does it matter? Yeah, I, because I'll talk directly to that person. Actually, some of these questions were not written by people in this room. They were gathered from other sources, so perhaps that's the case. That's okay. The okay. All right. Someone so why? All right. Here's 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 what is literally happening in Florida, and has happened. Okay, in the 2022 20, election, people come up. Come, well, here, right here in Lake County, we've had people come in with a necklace around their thing. It's got a little tag on it. That says press, mm -hmm. and they got they're wearing cameras, or they have cameras running their video camera on their phone, yeah. and they come into the office trying to create a confrontation. They're, that group is affiliated with some group have, using the First Amendment in their name. I don't even know what it is. But in Palm Beach County, the election workers in that office have had people come right in and put the cell phone right up, and we're taking video of you. We know where you live, and we're following you out to the parking lot, and we're going to take the tag number on your car. People in Palm Beach County have received letters from these people saying, we're watching you. Now, if you think that's okay behavior, you're to be pitied. And we as an association of supervisors are going to do everything we can to get the legislature to protect our election workers. Nobody in any job should have to go through <laughs> that kind of harassment. That's right. And yes, it is happening. Are there happening, already harassment laws, though, in place? But yes. they're not specific for no, election. No, not specific. Yeah, there are laws that appear to apply to elected officials, but not to our workers. And it's happening, and yes, we're going to continue to do that. Those laws apply to all citizens, actually. Right. That's they right. Protect all That's citizens, right. Whatever job. And we're 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 in, we're in favor of all doing. citizens being protected from harassment, but specifically our election workers. Uh, just it, you you know you said that you follow up with me, but I wanted to be uh, Florida's January 2024 report from the Office of Elections and Crime Security. They had three underpage report, and there was not one instance of harassment that was documented for election workers. And then also there was a public relations request that went out to all 67 counties to list, you know, uh, uh, harassment uh, instances, and 62 counties reported back with none and five excluded from participating. They didn't say anything. So there's not an issue. Uh, and, there, and, you know, as has been stated, there are laws on the books to protect citizens from harassment and intimidation in every area of life. And I don't see why it needs to be any different, uh, you know, for an election polling place. There's already uh, common sense laws on the books to protect individuals from real intimidation or harassment. Fortunately, here in Lake County, we haven't had any incidents yet. But I can assure you, as I have assured the election workers, if such an incident occurs, the Lake County Sheriff's Department will pay that person a visit. And they will be removed from the polling place, or they will be removed from my office. I am not going to tolerate that kind of behavior, period. No, Next question. All right, this is the third part of the question, and if you don't mind, sir, I'm going to answer this question. Okay. <laughs> Can you describe specific incidents of the above being harassment here in Lake County? Were any of these issues brought up before the state or the local sheriff? Last year, when I was working early voting in 2022, I should say, when I was working early voting in Sorrento, before the polls opened, it was probably about uh, 9 o'clock in the morning, we were all out having cigarettes and coffee and whatnot outside the polling place. And a car sped by on the street, and a loud voice said, F you! F all elections! Now, I'm a New Yorker. Didn't, That's harassment. Didn't bother me. Didn't bother me. <laughs> however, however, opinion. one of the election workers got really freaked out about it yeah. and went right to the clerk. And well, reported that's their it, problem. and went right to the clerk and reported it. And the clerk called the sheriff's department, and the sheriff dispatched a unit. That unit sat outside of our polling place yeah. for the rest of the day, Good. because there was an election worker that feared for her safety based on that incident. Mm -hmm. Now, like I said, it didn't bother me, but I fear for losing my First Amendment right to. Um, Ask questions I am just elections. answering the question. 
I'm just answering the question. So I'm a okay. deputy, so if that's something well, like that Well, but Alan should I've answer the question. Wait, wait just a minute. I've been trained to call, either call Ed Nathanson, who's our leader, or even if I feel it's urgent enough, 911 to let the Sheriff's Department know that I'm at this precinct, we had a threatening comment made to our workers here, and we just want you to come over. Exactly I mean, right. so, I mean, yeah. but I understand your concern about the, the First Amendment. And so, it's just that due diligence, you know, <coughs> due no. diligence. We're going to do everything we can to maintain decorum in every polling place every day that voting is taking place. It's that simple. Okay, next question. Who in the Lake County Supervisor of Elections Office actually has eyes and hands on list maintenance? Why were 23,000 <coughs> voters removed in December 2022 and another 68,000 changed from active to inactive status in 2023. The, what, read the 2022 bit again, the 24,000. 20, 23,000 voters were removed in December of 2022, and okay. another 68,000 changed from active to inactive status in 2023. Okay. The only thing I can tell you is that everything that we did was in compliance with the law. If the law said we needed to remove 23,000, then that's what happened. If the law said we needed to remove 60,000, that's what happened. That's just it. Well, every time there's an election, you update it, right? If people are not voting, and if follow they follow an active status. Because yeah, but they see, voted as, I mentioned, as I mentioned earlier, previously the law said we do that every other year. Now yeah. we do it every year. Yeah, okay, good. That's it. Okay. okay. <clears throat> Now we come to Mr. Vance. Please explain why the Florida SOEs don't have independent public published audits of all voting machines data transfer process. I have no idea. Because okay. it's not in the statutes. <laughs> yeah, that's a good answer. Yeah. All right. Please the, the, no, let, me, let me let me elaborate a little bit more. Effectively, we do have the audits of every election and that every here's here's another thing the statute oh, it's not getting too cold huh? okay <laughs> <laughs> I'm standing up it, it may be cool down there where you are but I'm standing a little higher uh, I'm usually the hot right, one in here's, here. <laughs> here here's here's the deal the law says that before each election we have to take a certain percentage of the tabulation machines that are going to be used in that election and have a public logic and accuracy test for them Several of you have attended these things. You see we have a test deck of balance. We put it through the machines. First, we run the machines and show that there's zero votes been run through it. The canvassing board takes care of all of this verification, et cetera, et cetera. And then 100%, every single tabulation machine that is used in that election goes through that logic and accuracy test before it is deployed to the polling place. And then the the audit is done after the election, which effectively is an audit on each of those tabulation machines. Okay, here's a follow-up. <coughs> Regarding audits of votes, CPAs use industry design methods to determine sample counts to be reviewed for audits. My observation is Supervisor of Elections does not use such sample design, thus would not be considered valid by CPAs. Explain why professional statistics sample methods are not used by Florida SOEs. I'm not sure that that's an accurate accusation. Um, maybe not be CPA standards, but we're election professionals, not CPAs. And the elections community has determined that the audit systems that we use are adequate. Statistic sampling is statistic sampling. I would, suggest, I would suggest that you take it to the legislature, get it in the law, and we'll do it. It's just that simple. We're going to comply with the law, folks. That's what it boils down to. Okay. Please explain all outsourcing of tasks and controls over their work to ensure accuracy and no data manipulation. Outsourcing of, of whatever question. tasks that might be outsourced. Are you 
What do you, okay, Vance, you're talking. Outside vendors. You mentioned okay. one of them earlier, but there okay, are others. VR? There. Yeah. The, the fact is, you just accept their work, or is there anything that you, uh, any independent review of their work process to make sure that the data is uh, accurately transmitted? Their, their work product and their data is reviewed every day by every supervisor's office in the state of Florida. And we have outside vendors that print our ballots, and we review every one of those ballots. We know how many were counted, we know how many we received, et cetera, et cetera. So all of that is, is done. I mean, uh, any, any outsourcing that we do, we check and recheck and make sure that it's, that it's accurate. Thing I can tell you. How did the Red Belly Road thing happen? Because that was an automated event uh, initiated by Voter Focus and was brought to your attention, and then you all went in and manually <coughs> changed those addresses back. We sure did. Right. We sure did. So I'm glad you brought that up. So Diane. that happened. Well, do you want? Do you want the by answer? An automated system, unbeknownst to anybody in the office. That's right. And when we and when we discovered the problem, we corrected it. The problem Correct. that we, the citizens, did bring to you. In fact, I'm not sure that. Uh, yes, y'all brought it, but I'm not sure that that was the first time we were aware of it. I, I, that, that it really, it's not important. What's important to me is the fact that the mistake was made, the mistake was acknowledged, and it was corrected. For those of you that don't know what she's talking about, when we got ready to do the um, redistricting, which is required every 10 years. The congressional districts, the legislative districts are all redrawn. The county commission districts, the school board districts are all redrawn. This necessitates <coughs> the redrawing of some precinct lines. So we wanted to do it the most efficient, most accurate way. We hired a GIS expert who has worked with Lake County GIS data for the last 20 plus years. He came in, he analyzed it, and he said, okay, your best bet is to use your 911 data system. Everybody thinks 911 is pretty pretty accurate. Would you not agree? <clears throat> so we called the 911 people. They said, "Sure, we'll be happy to share it with you." It it took several hours to download all that information. We got it downloaded, and we didn't question it. So we took those addresses. We sent voter information cards to everybody whose address we had there. Then we find out there's, how many was it, 20 or 30 some odd, I believe, addresses there in In that Claremont. one specific yeah. instance. The, the U.S. Postal Service has a street in Claremont called 12th Street. I have no idea how that same street was named Red Belly Road in the 9-11 uh, database, <laughs> but it was. Excuse and wait, me, wait just, I do have to address that because he I he researched it this week. Easy you have my it. information right there. Easy does now, it. I researched it and I got the information directly from, I talked with chief of police, I talked with fire departments, and they referred me to the Lake County Public Safety Support. I have their number right here. They do addresses. I con confirmed with Brad and Susan that at no time in the databases has there ever been a Red Belly Road. Oh. Confirmed by the public safety support people that do the addresses that have to do with 911 and all of that. Never has Red Belly Road been in that system. Thank I you for hearing me, and I apologize. For I would respectfully up. suggest that you go to a more reliable source to verify I have, things. I have every one of you that can is in direct conflict here. with the facts. No, sir. These are the facts from these Next question. People. All right. Okay. The next Let's the go. next question has to do with uh, we, let me let me address one more thing. Please there. do we have the email traffic between our office and the nine one one people. Mm -hmm. I will I will get that the traffic. The nine one one people say they do not have anything to do with addresses. You call and talk to them again. Think about that. I have it right here. Think they did not change the addresses. How could, how Lake could anyone... Public safety support is who okay, does the addresses. Go ahead. Okay, the next uh, question is from the same person about hand counting. And uh, apparently uh, 
the state statute calls for uh, people not being able to touch any kind of voting machines. Uh, and a hand counting analysis of our election does not include any contact with the machines. <coughs> Lake County would not have to count 22 million votes. Lake County would potentially count under 500,000 votes. Australia hand counts over 25 million votes. France hand counts over 25 million using volunteers. And the question is, would knowing these facts change your stance on allowing a hand counting station <coughs> parallel to the machines during the next election? I personally, and as long as I'm supervisor for elections in Lake County, Florida, that office will have absolutely nothing to do with hand counting ballots. It worked for so long. I really don't care. That is long, as that's long that's as that's working now. I'm the one that has the floor here. As that's long as the I'm the supervisor in Lake County, hand counting will not be a part of the equation. Okay. It's just that simple. Right. That's the answer to the question. I, I'm not even going to discuss that's it. That's the okay. answer to I, I am the locked question. down. That's I am right. not going to have anything to do with a process that has been proven by research, credible research, to be less accurate. No. And it has is going to cost a whole lot more money. Yeah. It's going to take a whole lot more time. And I'm not going to have anything to do with it. Period. Okay. We That's the that. answer to it's that question. It's against the law. It's against That's, the law. Right. Well, sure. Okay. For the well, what, but what? What? I'm sure. I don't know who wrote the question, but what? What these people that are advocating hand counting are trying to do is to get the legislature to say you, the supervisor, can choose to hand count. I'm telling you right now, it ain't going to happen on my watch. Forget it. And that's about as honest as you get. If you think hand counting is so good, why don't you run for supervisor of election and see if you can win? I'm going to support the guy that does. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> but it, it's, you know, we, we're in a mess. The, the, the public question has, so been answered, no, we're 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 the question has been answered, Rick. The question has been answered. Okay. We're in court, guys. In, 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 in a matter that does next not question. invite next yeah. Are we at to mine yet? <laughs> okay. And I do, can't make heads yeah. nor tails of it. I know. <laughs> So I am going to ignore I it. I this much. I've been scratching. Okay. The final question that I have, Senator. No, you have one well, more, Mike. I, I, okay, well, let's get it up to me. All right. Why do you oppose House Bill 359? I don't know what that is. And why do you support Senate Bill 562? <laughs> do you know I, don't, I don't know what that is. I, I wrote that question. Okay. You've already addressed uh, 562. That was the harassment <coughs> bill and sure. why you're for that harassment. And that's very vague that, you know, that, 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 it, that it could be uh, that, that a poll worker would be able to. It's their opinion. It's a vague process to cause somebody. It's lawfare, I see it. But anyway, 359 was the option that you just mentioned uh, where each county would have the option to go into hand counting yep. paper ballots okay. at precinct level. Okay. Uh, it just gives them the option. You're even opposed off yep. an option. You mm -hmm. don't want us to be able to petition you. You know. If you you know get your legislators to put it in the law, then we'll then then that will be there. But I will promise you when I'm supervisor, it ain't gonna happen in Lake County. Gotcha. It's just okay. that simple. End All of right. conversation. That's an honest okay. answer. You were opposed then to that answer. sir. Can what I part of no do you not understand? Yeah. No, no, no. I just asked you. When I'm supervisor, it ain't going to happen. Why am I opposed to it? Because okay. the same reasons I stated earlier. My turn. My turn. Okay. <laughs> I could not make heads or tails. I know. I'm questions. sorry. I'm just sorry. Just you. So, um, you know, how is the DMV trained? Because we've noticed an uptick in the MPAs. And I know I even had a friend who had registered as a Republican at the DMV. And all of a sudden, when he went to vote, um, he wondered where the rest of his ballot was. And that's when he found out they had entered him as an NPA, not as a Republican, because he didn't look at his little voter's card that he got. And so how do the instructions get to them, or what are they told, or... or I'm not that familiar with the DMV instructions and the processes and all that. This is a frequent um, problem that we have. We, the supervisors, have tried to work with the DMV, we've tried to work with the legislature, and it's a work in progress. It's the best answer I can give you. The law is very clear, though, that if the voter fails to 
choose a party affiliation, mm -hmm. they have to make an affirmative choice, mm -hmm. one party or the other. If they fail to do that, they're automatically classified as NPA. And that's probably what happened. Unfortunately, humans are involved in the process at DMV. I'm not going to try to Seems like suppose they just not get what's going on. Seems like registration instead it, of... Well, it, just it seems like the clerks, in order to get through the process faster, they're just automatically grabbing the NPA. They're not. Well, they're I not think some of it may have to, it may have to do with the way the questions are phrased to the the person standing there at the DMV. Yeah, the clerk yeah. there may phrase the question in a way, and the, who knows? The person renewing their driver's license may be ready to hurry up and get out of there, yeah. and they just just blow it off, sort of. And, like that, that is what happened to me, and I, I got I got put in a different political party. Yeah. And, but it was because of the stress of the situation. I was trying to do driver's license, car registrations, and everything. Like everything at the and same I don't time. even remember even checking the box. But that's a very. But I think it was just a stressful time of trying to change yeah. my household and everything. Yeah. Yeah. It's just it's. It's a frequent seems to be more frequent. But once I actually sat down and months later, then I was realizing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we have three more questions. And if anyone has an additional question, please write it down now. All right, because once I get through these three, three questions, the question and answer period will be over unless I have something else come my way. First, please explain why the FSA, the uh, Florida Society, uh, Florida uh, Association. Supervisors Association, please explain why the FSA proposals are good for transparency and integrity of elections. Okay. First, let's go to the thing. What, what other questions do you have? All right. Why were 10 people denied credentials to be poll watchers in the last election? I won't answer that question. Okay, and I'm going to take that, that as... That is, that is nobody's business but mine. Okay. All right. Why were you considering denying Ken McCard credentials to be a poll watcher? I don't know that I was. Maybe I was. Maybe I wasn't. quotes that were from you were considering in your office. And okay. And you changed your mind. What did I do to deserve that consideration? Well, that I, I have no, no recollection, Ken. I don't know. Okay. All right, let's talk about the FSC um, administration of security. And the, are you talking about the legislative priority? Rephrase that, uh, reread that question again. Please explain why the FSA proposals are good for transparency mm -hmm. and integrity of election. Okay. Our proposals right here is the document. First, we ask the legislature to essentially do nothing this year. But if they're going to do anything, protect election workers from harassment and threats. We've always already talked about that. Whether you think they are happening or not, and thankfully they're not happening here in Lake County, but they're certainly happening in other areas of the state. We won't try to uh, protect them. Exempt election workers from E-Verify. Folks, that is a labor-intensive pain in the booty that is completely useless and completely unnecessary. The law says before anybody is appointed to be an election worker, they must be a registered voter. And they've already, the state has done the verification of citizenship for that. So why go through the process? That's why we're wanting to exempt election workers from the E-Verify system. We're in no way, absolutely not one supervisor would even think of hiring a non-citizen to be an election worker. Whoever came up with that far-fetched idea needs some help. Exempt all voter information from public records requests. Requests shall be made available to or reproduced only for the voter, a canvassing board, an election official, a political party or official thereof, a candidate who has filed qualification papers and is opposed in an upcoming election. What we're trying to do is protect your private information. Current law does not give us that protection. It does not give you that protection. But we would prefer that you have that protection. Anybody, whether they're a citizen of Florida or not, can can send us a public records request. They can ask for the entire voter registration roll and we have to give it to them. That's certain 
uh, items in that, such as driver's license number, social security number, and signatures, are not revealed. But everything else is there for public consumption. No, sir, not yet. I'm, I'm going to continue with this. But, but the, the reason that the legislature put the political parties and those type of people in there is so that they can use it for political purposes. <coughs> We want them to keep segregated, but eliminate the requirement for ballots cast during a poll extension to be placed in provisional limits. What that is, in the case of whatever might have occurred, the governor or court says, okay, you can't close at 7 o'clock. You have to keep the, the polls open for a period of time. The law currently says every ballot cast during that extended time must be in a provisional envelope. They're all cast as provisional envelopes, uh, provisional ballots. What we're trying to say is, listen, we understand the need to keep them segregated, but let's do something friendly for the voters. It's at 7 p.m. or later, on a long day for the workers and probably for the voters themselves, rather than requiring them to fill out this long, laborious provisional envelope thing and then go through all of that, let's just let those, those ballots be kept in a segregated place. The tabulation machines have a, a slot right there. We could very easily put them in that and everything. We want to keep them segregated. The reason that courts want them segregated is in case some legal action says, no, you can't. You have to throw those ballots out. They can't be counted. But anyhow, we want that segregation to be maintained. But we don't, don't have to put the voters through the, the envelopes. Require the establishment of a statewide database of felony offenders complete with all terms of the sentences. We want to have reliable information on whether these people that have committed felonies are eligible to vote or not. And those, those people themselves deserve to know their status. And we would like for the state to put together such a system. Good luck with that. And then exempt election worker information from public records requests. There again goes back to the Palm Beach County thing. It's nobody's business where you live or where you live. That's right. We're trying to protect Is those elections. Is it still on a big card that people have to wear at the polls? That's the poll watchers. Right. All we have there is their first name. It says, I'm a poll watcher. We don't have we don't have their address or anything like that. We used to. Right. But we took that off. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. No, uh, you got, we have write your question down. We have a softball question and we have a hardball question. Softball question. Yes. How do you handle elderly retirement home residents whose signatures change due to health or age conditions? Good question. We take, when, when we send our supervised voting teams out, we take blank voter registration uh, forms and ask them to do a signature update first. Good. And so they, they do the signature update. And so do they also, I have to jump in here. So do they only any change that they make, is that the information they have to fill out or do they have to fill out the entire thing oh, no, they have completely? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They fill out okay. the entire thing. But the the person that is there from my team or one of the nursing home facilities, anybody else can do the actual filling out of okay. that form. Okay. It's just the signature has to be done by the gotcha. person themselves. Okay. Okay, now I think this yeah, one's been asked close. and answered, but I'm going to ask it again because I'll ask every question that comes yeah. I am a citizen. Why did you in 2022 and will you in 2024 deny me the right to do my civic duty and be a poll watcher? I'm not going to give you the reasons that you're not going to be a poll watcher. I didn't ask the question, so oh. please stop looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> Rizzo, you know you love the attack. But I still have question as to why you will not tell me so but I didn't write it. That's okay. Okay and this is the last question. Yay, last week. Yeah. The last, Yay. The last, Yay. Is he going to answer it? He just did. He just did. Right. And just he, did. Said he said he's, said he's not, not going to give you the reason. You. And this is the last question <laughs> and, and then again. I get, then I get closing remarks right? right. And yes, then you get some closing yes, remarks. Absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> but again and so this is a hot button issue uh, uh, Alan, uh, why were seven or nine members of the REC denied being poll watchers? It's the same question, same answer. I yeah, know, same but I will ask every question. The law, the law says that the names have to be submitted to me for approval. 
There's nothing that says I have to approve, and there's nothing that says I have to give reasons for disapproving. End of conversation. <laughs> I'm sorry. You got another person coming in at 1130. No, no, we don't. We don't. We don't. That was a mistake. Oh, okay. And that was my mistake. I'm okay. sorry. I had the flu for two weeks and was trying they're, to catch up with in. everything. They're not okay. coming in. Okay. Yeah. What we're going to do, and I'm sure that Alan will hang out afterwards to answer any individual okay. questions. Let, let her ask her question, too. Uh, right in there, Charlie. Well, yeah, but I've got, I got some closing remarks okay. first. Yeah. Okay. Okay, here's one. Only allowing the listed groups to request FOIAs is restricted to those who will not challenge you. What? I think it's what this question says question. is that by... by by listing groups that are allowed to make a FOIA request, you are limiting or excluding people that might challenge you. Is this from you, Ken? Yes, it is. <laughs> How, explain it. It doesn't make any sense. Uh, in, in one of your FSA proposals, uh, I think the most, the most important one is that you're only going to allow political parties and candidates and so and so. To ask that's the current statute. Just why are you? Why are you? Why are we suggesting it again? Then it's on statute. <coughs> okay. I'll, my example is we have groups of people out there who are citizens who don't mind. I'll use you know bucking you or any other official uh, to get information in order to check voter rolls, for example. Sue so parent or a group. They're not part of that group. So I don't, I don't think, and candidates and, and people in, in office right now, whether we want to believe it or not, as a great, you know, loving American, love the flag and so forth, they don't want to buck certain people in their group, all right? You would be an important one not to buck. Uh, so that, you're only allowing uh, people to get those lists that are not going to want it, not going to want to get it to make you look like you're not doing your job properly. Other groups want the right to look at your information and analyze it themselves or get someone else to analyze it. You are, you are excluding a very important group in this county that went around and around the state submitting getting information. Okay. First, this is the collective wisdom of the Association of Supervisors whose logo is at the top. This is not Alan Hayes' custom origination, okay? Mm -hmm. I answered your question a few minutes ago when I was going down this list and I said that we are trying to protect the privacy of every voter in this state. Now current statute already says that the canvassing board and these others that are listed here are, can get access to that information. Mm -hmm. So we're not trying to stop them from getting access to the information. What we're trying to do they're is to stop. Work, sir. That's what I'm saying. They're not going to work. Just John Q. Public. We're trying to we're trying to protect the privacy of the individual voter. That's what we're trying to do. Yeah. yeah. So it doesn't have anything at all to do with people challenging me or not challenging me. It has nothing to do with that. Sue we, challenge you. Okay. Sue no, challenges I me all the time. That's no big <laughs> yeah. Listen, best okay. buddies. I, I, I just I want to say this on the record. I do not challenge. Anybody in the Supervisor of Elections Office on their integrity or their honesty. Our questions come from solely from the database yep. wanting yep. to get answers to why things happen. Nothing to do with the personnel. And I'm saying that publicly. I have said that to you publicly before. And that is why I get so frustrated when you will not tell me. Is it because I'm asking questions that you deny me? I, I don't so know. I'm not going to tell you. What? That's, so, that's so ridiculous. That's so arrogant. So anyway, anyway, because of, because of some confusion about this morning's uh, schedule that was published and then republished, the supervisor is obviously under the impression that he would only be here until 11.30, so he may have other plans. Therefore, I'm going to give him a brief time to make some closing remarks, That's right. and then if he yeah. does have time, you can address your individual questions to him after we close the event. Thank you. All right. As I stated earlier, my first political run was in 2004. 
this is now election number eight that I've been in contest. This is the most difficult contest that I have engaged in. Every other competitor that was running for the same office that I was running for conducted themselves in an honorable way with integrity and honesty and respect. Mm -hmm. What I'm going to ask you to do is to pray for me mm -hmm. and to pray for Tom Vale, my opponent. I choose to use the word opponent because he is opposing me and he's not competing for the same office that I'm competing. His track record of a liar is irrefutable. I have it right here in front of me and I'm going to share it with you. I don't like, I absolutely hate negative campaigning. But the voters of this county deserve to know the truth. You get back to that scripture verse, the truth is what sets you free. And if you don't know the truth, you're likely to make an unwise decision. You're certainly making an uninformed decision. So I'm going to make sure that you have the information. As you've seen, this was the original document. Tom altered that document by underlining and circling these things. And then he said this is the actual document produced by the supervisors with red highlights. And then on the back of it, he has ten lies. Now keep in mind, this is under the heading, Do You Want Honest, <coughs> Open, and Fair Elections? Yeah. Honest elections begin with the person administering the election. There's nothing honest about this side of this paper at all. So I went to Tom. Again, Matthew 5.23 tells us if you have something against another person, go to that person privately. And I did. And I pointed out his transgressions. So what did he do? He then changed the statement at the bottom of the page and says, with red highlights added by Tom Vale. I give him credit for that. He did nothing to change the lies on the back of it. And I told him, I said, Tom, honest elections begin with honest people administering the elections. I said, you're telling lies to the people right here. For instance, FSE, he says, meets in secret from the public. I told him, that's a bald-faced lie. Oh, he says, well, you have meetings that the public are not invited to. I said, that's correct, because there's security issues that are spoken about, and you'll never get admitted to those meetings. He says, FSE is a lobbying organization on behalf of the desires of leftist organization. That is another bald-faced lie. FSE has recently published the agenda including creating a statutory impression that election workers are in danger. That's not an impression, folks. That's fact. I told you that. So he's got lie number one there. Or actually, that's lie number three. Allowing non-citizens to be election workers. That's a total and complete fabrication. Then three, four, five, going down through here. There's nothing here that is truthful. The man is a liar. And I told him straight to his face, he's a liar. I am a man of integrity. I am honest. And I am not going to lie to you about anything. That's all there is to it. Now, you talk about transparency. We want transparent elections. Do we want transparent <coughs> campaigns also? Yes. Would that be a wise idea, you think? <laughs> I would agree. That's not going to happen. Well, in transparency, it's going to happen right now, part of it anyhow. This is the financial disclosure form from Tom Vale's 2022 campaign for state representative. As of June 10, 2022, his net worth was minus $280,143. He lists assets here. It said the, the instructions say assets individually valued at over $1,000. Trust, 50%, $4,000. RV, $5,000. Bank account, 750 
That's not even $1,000. But total, <coughs> his assets add up to fewer than $10,000. Liabilities. One liability listed to default resolution group, Greenville, Texas, $294,893. If the man can't handle his own finances any better than that, should you trust him to handle a $6 million budget here in Lake County? Pray for Tom Vale. I, I do pray for Tom Vale. Scripture tells us to pray for our enemies and to pray for each other. Those are the facts, folks. Pray for Tom Bailey. Well, yeah. it, it, you asked. I'm uh, not going to debate that. No, but I'm, you're, I'm not going to no, debate. No, scripture that. also says that you don't make an accusation without a couple of witnesses. So, and you know, you're a lot of disparaging remarks. We are going yeah. to close the public portion of this meeting. I want to thank everyone on behalf of the Republican Party for attending, and I certainly want to thank Alan Hayes. In my mind, knowing what he was going to face this morning, mm -hmm. it took a bit of political courage to come in here yes, and stand up there and answer our questions yes, as honestly as he did. I'm yeah. all for accountability, folks, and I'm willing to be held accountable, and I'm transparent. Sometimes to a fault. Anyway, but, thank uh, you for coming. And remember, March 20th, the coming March 20th is the 170th birthday of the Republican Party. Wow.